We're going to continue our study of binomial coefficients now by looking at Pascal's identity and triangle. To help this make sense to us, we are going to take a look at subsets. So remember when we're talking about subsets, we're saying we have an original set and a subset includes only values from the original set, anywhere from zero of those values, the empty set, all the way up to all of the values, which would be equivalent to the set itself. So if I have a zero set, I'm just talking about a set that is empty. And that zero set has only one subset, which is the empty set, which is of course the set itself. If I have a set with just one item, so say my set is one, while well, my subsets of that set are either not choosing the one or choosing the one. So my subset would be the empty set or a one, which just stands for the first value of my set, which would be one. If I have a two set, then I can either not choose any of the values. I can choose the first value. I can choose the second value, or I can choose both values. So it has four subsets and we get the idea. So the question becomes, what does this have to do with Pascal's identity and triangle and binomial coefficients? Well, I will tell you. Let's take a look at this first guy. This first guy is zero, choose zero. So I have zero items in my subset. Let me just move that over a little bit. Zero, choose zero, which we said was equal to one. So there's just one way to choose zero items and that's to not choose them. If I have a one set, I can either choose zero of them, and there's one way to do that, or I can choose one of them, and there's one way to do that. So again, zero choose zero, one choose zero, one choose one, we get the idea. And then if I look at my two set, I've got two choose zero, two choose one, two choose two. There's just one way to choose zero. There's two ways that I can choose one, and there's just one way I can choose both. And then I can continue with three choose zero, three choose one, three choose two, three choose three, and that would give me my one way, one, two, three ways, one, two, three ways, and one way. So obviously what I'm doing here is looking at a triangle, Pascal's triangle. So this is just a cleaner version of what we just talked about. We can say zero, choose zero, one, choose zero, one, choose one, so on and so forth. And what we didn't talk about is the fact that in order to find the next value, so instead of me having to actually compute three, choose one, three, choose two, and so forth, I can instead say in order to find this value, I'm adding the two digits above it one to the left and one to the right. Now, this one also works because there's no number here, so zero plus one. This is one plus zero. This is zero plus one. This is one plus two. This is two plus one. This is one plus zero. So you get the idea that that's what Pascal's triangle is all about, is that you can add the two digits above it in order to find the next value. So I wouldn't have to actually compute anything uh, to find four choose zero, four choose one, four choose two, four choose three, and four choose four. I obviously could do that, but I could just say this is zero plus one, this is one plus three, this is three plus three, this is three plus one, and this is one plus zero. And so now I have the whole next row without doing any additional work, except for some quick mental math. Now, one of the key identities here, obviously Pascal's identity is right here, which is essentially saying what we just said. If this is n is zero, n is one, n is two, n is three, n is four, Pascal's identity says in order to find n choose k, for instance, you're going to take n minus one. So they're saying go to the row before it and then take k 
minus 1 and k and add those together. So we can see based on what we just did that this works, but obviously we want to take a look um, mathematically and combinatorially why this works. So how would I prove this combinatorially? Remember, to prove something combinatorially, we have to basically find a word problem that represents the situation and shows that we can count it two ways. So what I need to do is show that this is equivalent to this in a way that makes sense by counting in two different ways. So if I say there are five applicants vying for three similar open positions, how can I represent that? Five choose three. So based on that, what I'm trying to prove is that that is going to be equivalent to n minus one or four choose two plus four choose three. So we have our five people. Person one is either chosen for the job or not chosen. So how can I prove combinatorially using just those two things that I've written down? Well, I can say there are five applicants vying for three similar positions. If person one gets the job, then there are four people left with two open positions or rule of sum, let's say the first person is not chosen for the job, there's still four applicants left, but I still have three open positions. So we can tell just common sense wise that that does make sense. And we can see that that would indeed be equivalent to five applicants for three positions. Let's go about proving the exact same thing we just proved combinatorily, proving it algebraically instead. So I'm just going to use the uh, formula for what is a combination. On the left hand side, n choose k can be rewritten as n factorial, k factorial, n minus k factorial. So remember we're taking the first or the, uh, the top is our numerator and then for the bottom, denominator, we're taking the second value, k factorial, however many we're choosing, and then we're finding the difference. So we're going to do that on the right side as well. So my first fraction would be n minus 1 factorial. And then remember it says take the bottom value factorial and then subtract n minus 1 minus k minus 1 factorial. And then the second, whoops, that's a plus. This is n minus 1 factorial, and this would be k factorial, n minus k minus 1 factorial, or n minus 1 minus k, same thing. Um, doing just a little bit of cleanup, I can see that n minus 1 minus the quantity of k minus 1 would actually give me a minus k and a positive 1, so those 1s are going to cancel. So this is actually k minus 1 factorial n minus k factorial. So I chose to be a little bit lazy there and not completely rewrite the whole thing. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is I need to add two fractions together, and as we all know, I'm sure we all know, you have to have a common denominator common denominator in which to do that. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my first fraction times k and times k. Now why is that helpful? Because now my new fraction is k times n minus 1 factorial, but my denominator says k times k minus 1 factorial is actually k factorial. And then as we said, this is n minus k factorial. So obviously this is my goal. I'm trying to get to here when I add them together. So far I'm liking what I have on my first fraction because I have the correct denominator. So what am I going to do on my second fraction? Well, I'm going to multiply, multiply, excuse me, by uh, n minus k. 
n times n minus k. Now again, why is that helpful? So my numerator, keep switching colors on myself here. My numerator is n minus 1 factorial n minus k. And my denominator is k factorial. And then just as I did on the left side where this k and k minus 1 factorial turned into k factorial, n minus k minus 1 times n minus k actually turns into n minus k factorial. Because obviously we're just starting at one position before this. So that's the good news is I now have the same denominator. So now let's see what I can do. My denominator is the same, k factorial n minus k factorial. That's what I wanted. So let's go about combining my numerator. So for my numerator, I have k times n minus 1 factorial, and then I have n minus 1 factorial times n minus k. Well, what I'm looking at here is I have a common factor of n minus 1 factorial. So I'm going to pull that out and see what's left. On the left, I have k. On the right, I have n minus k. So again, continuing to reduce or simplify, I have n minus 1 factorial and then this is k plus n minus k. So k and minus k will cancel, so this is times n. And then just as we've done twice now, if I look at n times n minus 1 factorial, that's actually n factorial over k factorial n minus k factorial. So yes, I have in fact proved algebraically that these two sides are congruent. Here's one for you to try. n choose k is equal to n choose n minus k. So you can choose to do this algebraically or combinatorially. So press pause, try this question, then press play to see how you did. So combinatorially, I can just say, if I have n applicants vying for k positions, uh, then that's the same as me having n applicants and then not choosing the n minus k people. So that's a pretty simple combinatorial proof. Again, showing this algebraically is almost as simple. The left side is n factorial over k factorial n minus k factorial. And the right side is n factorial over n minus k factorial n minus n minus k factorial. And of course, this side simplifies to n minus k and then n minus n, those will cancel. And then minus minus k is actually just k factorial. So we can see that these two are in fact the same and just in an opposite order, k factorial and n minus k factorial. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at a few other identities that involve binomial coefficients.